This is the Anker Solix C2000 Gen 2, and it's designed to fix the single most frustrating flaw in almost every portable power station, the silent battery killer. You know the feeling, you fully charge your power station for an emergency, but days later when the power actually goes out, it's already lost a massive chunk of its battery just sitting there. That's idle power consumption and it's infuriating. Anchor claims this is the world's first two kilowatt hour portable power station with an idle draw of under 10 watts. And if that claim is true, then this could be the most efficient portable power station I've ever tested. But before before I go any further in this video, I want to say thank you to Anchor for sending this unit over so I can find out if that claim is actually true. Today we're going to test that claim, then see what its 2400 watts of rated power can do for your home or your minivan camper, and find out if this is really the new benchmark. Now the first test couldn't be simpler. We're at 100% and I'm turning on the AC inverter with absolutely nothing plugged in, and we're going to leave it like this for exactly 24 hours. Now now while that ridiculously long time lapse is running, it's the perfect unobtrusive moment for you to scroll down and hit that thumbs up button. It makes a huge difference and doesn't use any of your battery. I got sidetracked for almost 45 and a half hours and I learned one very important thing. I need to update my iPad. But all jokes aside, this thing used around 400 watt hours and that equates to just about nine watts of idle runtime per hour. So the claim that this uses under 10 watts per hour is absolutely valid. All right, next up is the test I know all of the spec nerds have been waiting for, the full capacity rundown. A power station sticker might say one thing, but how much of that battery is actually usable in the real world? Let's find out. For this test, I've connected the two kilowatt hour expansion battery to the main unit, giving us a massive rated capacity of just over 4,000 watt hours. I'm then gonna use this heat gun to pull a consistent 600 watt load through our watt meter until the entire system is drained. And that final result is in. We were able to pull a massive three watt hours from the combined system before it shut down. Now that's based on a total of 4,096 watt hours of rated capacity, giving us a real world AC efficiency of just over 80%. That's a very solid number. And honestly, 3,300 watt hours is a ton of usable energy for any serious home backup or off-grid adventure. So after draining the batteries, the next step was of course to recharge them. And I wanted to see exactly how fast that would be and how loud the unit would get in that process. Plugging it into the wall, I saw it consistently pull over 1,700 watts, which is right up there with its maximum rated AC input of 1800 watts. Now pulling that much power meant that the fans had to kick on to keep things cool. I measured the noise from about a foot away and the max I saw with this tool right here was around 43 decibels. The official specs say it stays below 45 decibels under a full AC load. So my test was spot on. For how much power it was handling, that was impressively quiet. And while it was doing its super fast recharge, I took the opportunity to hop into the Anchor app. That is where you can monitor everything, but it's also crucial for keeping the unit up to date. It immediately found a new firmware version and the over the air update was quick and easy. All of the features are working perfectly and the process was totally seamless. My entire entertainment center is running through this C2000. It's acting as a UPS or uninterruptible power supply. Anchor claims a switch over time of under 10 milliseconds, which is faster than the competition. So let's try Try it out. Perfect, zero interruption. So for things like sensitive electronics, computers, or even medical devices like a CPAP, that seamless switch is critical. And I'm gonna go ahead and unplug it just to show you that everything was in fact plugged into the battery. Now for the main event, Anchor says that this can run a fridge for up to 32 hours. So instead of taking their word for it, I'm gonna run it for one hour with my fridge and see exactly how much power it uses. All right, our one hour test is done. So let's check the results. 
In exactly one hour, my refrigerator used 6% of the C2000's battery. And if we extrapolate that out, it gives us an estimated total runtime of about 16 to 17 hours for my specific refrigerator. Now, you might remember that Anchor's official specs say this can run a fridge for up to 32 hours. So why the difference? Well, that up to number is always a best case scenario, likely with a brand new, super efficient fridge in a controlled lab setting. This is a real world kitchen fridge and factors like the ambient temperature in your house and how efficient your specific model is will always affect the final number. So for me, this is actually a fantastic result. Knowing I can get a rock solid 16 plus hours of real world runtime tells me I can easily get through any overnight or full day power outage without a problem. It's a realistic and very impressive number. So the C2000 weighs just under 42 pounds. It's not exactly lightweight, but when you compare that to its predecessor, the F2000, which was essentially the same device, it was almost 67 pounds, so about 35% lighter, and it's actually also much smaller. So out here, we're gonna test the AC inverter. I have all of my gear inside of my minivan camper ready for coffee, making meals, all the things you might want to do at your campsite. So this is absolutely a real world test that you might encounter with a power station like this, except for I've got it out in my minivan instead of somewhere like your kitchen. And before I get into testing the AC inverter, I wanted to point out that there are four USB outputs three of which are USB-C, and two of these are massive 140 watt USB-C outlets. The other one is 15 watts, and then this last one is your standard 12 watt dyno USB-C-A. Not USB-C-A, USB-A. So the three must have appliances when I go minivan camping, which also equates to a home kitchen setup, but maybe just a little less powerful. One is my electric pot. The next thing that I have is this microwave. And then finally, I have my mini Keurig coffee maker. All three of these appliances together do pull over 2,400 watts. So I'm gonna load it up and see, can the Anchor Solix handle all of these appliances? And since I actually do want a afternoon cup of coffee, I'm gonna go ahead and start brewing my coffee first. That way, I can see how that impacts the device. So we bumped straight up to 1500 watts of the coffee maker. Let's get the kettle going. And now we are at that 2300 watts. I'm gonna run the microwave just to see if I can trip the system at that overload capability. 3300 watts almost, and that is insane. We were reaching up to 3200 watts for quite a bit. So right as I was triggering that overload, my watch went off. It was telling me that my overload protection had activated. That's an absolutely awesome feature because if I am away from the device and I have something important on there, that'll alert me to come check on it. The coffee is done brewing. I'm gonna go ahead and disconnect that. I do like to disconnect these devices when they're not in use just because I don't wanna accidentally turn them on unintentionally when I have the AC inverter on. But what I wanna do now is just go ahead and do a hot soap test. Let this microwave run for just a few minutes. I'm pulling a pretty steady 2000 watts. It says at this rate with just the main battery, I don't have the expandable battery. I'm gonna get about 0.9 hours. That's about 54 minutes. So I'll go ahead and run that down to about 50 minutes of runtime between my microwave and between my pan, that is plenty of runtime for an absolutely awesome meal. It's too hot. <laughs> so the microwave ran for two minutes, no problem. Now I only have the pan running. It's pulling just under 800 watts. It's settled into its steady state temperature. At this rate, the thing says it will run for over two hours. That would be plenty of time to make almost any meal you could even imagine with this thing. And just to show you, that water is absolutely boiling in there. So we've definitely proved that the AC inverter works just as described, but what I wanna show you now is how to maximize that solar panel input. I'm not gonna hook up a solar panel to it, but I do have a 560 watt DC to DC charger. 
I'm gonna hook that up and see, will this thing accept all 560 watts from that charger? Interestingly, the DC input here is an XT60i or intelligent XT60 input. The reason that's important is it has two levels here, 11 to 28 volts at eight amps or 8.2 specifically, and then 28 to 60 volts at 17 amps. The car charger that came with the Anker C2000 is an intelligent output. My DC to DC charger does not have that internal adapter, excuse me, that intelligent adapter. So let's hook it up and see this 56 volt, 560 watt source, will it charge the Anker C2000? And so with that charger, we bumped up straight to 580 watts. It is fluctuating, as you can see, between 580 and 550. At this rate, it'll, it says it'll take about 0.6 hours or just about 40 or 4, 36 minutes to charge from 85%. These new charging capabilities with these portable power stations is absolutely insane. Being able to combine that 800 watts of solar input along with grid power up to 1800 watts for a combined total of 2600 watts is a phenomenal amount of power to put into this power station. The only realistic problem with that is who is actually hooking up 800 watts of solar while they're plugged into a wall outlet. I don't know, let me know in the comments. Okay, before my final thoughts, let's quickly boil this all down to the biggest pro and the biggest con. The main pro is without a doubt, it's efficiency. The nine watt idle draw finally solves that silent battery killer problem, meaning the power you store is the power you get to use. It also backs that up with serious performance from its powerful 2400 watt output to its incredibly fast 58 minute recharge time. The biggest thing to consider here is the weight. While it's 25% lighter than the industry average for its capacity, at nearly 42 pounds, it's still a heavy lift that won't be for everyone. So with that said, what's my final verdict? This isn't just an incremental update. The combination of that game-changing efficiency and top-tier power inside of a design that's 29% more compact than average does set a new standard. With its 10-year lifespan and a solid five-year warranty, it's clear this is built to last. For anyone serious about home backup or off-grid power for a van or RV, this is a top-tier choice. I wanna know what you think. Is the ultra low idle draw the most important feature for you? Let me know in the comments. And in case you're wondering, the C2000 Gen 2 pre-sale is live now. Get your early bird discount. You can check out the details in the video description box. Thank you for watching. And if this video helped you out, hit that like button and I'll see you in the next one.